Hi guys and uh, welcome to this tutorial. I'm trying this for the first time, so I am uh, grateful for any feedback that you might have after this. But I'm eager to try out uh, this type of uh, tutorial. I wanted to test out uh, and see if I can make this again for you guys. Um, yeah, it's made, uh, as you know, <laughs> in the Keyshot. It's, uh, I'm actually using Keyshot 8.2 and I have uh, my system setup is, uh, let's see, it's uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's got a, an Intel Core i7 processor, 2.6 gigahertz. It's a uh, Windows I'm using. Um, I wish it was a Mac, but it's not. So, um, but anyway, let's try this out. As you can see over here, I have my scene tree. I have uh, three planes and a fourth plane, which is actually my light, my point light. And then I have the subject, which is a clock. But um, let me just, zoom out a bit here so you can tell what it is I'm talking about. So basically you can see it here. I have these three. Oh, it's really, really not the fastest computer here, but got my point light up here and I got the, I shove it down here and I have three planes. Let's see if I can make it again, okay? So new, let's start. And then let's see what it says here. I'm going to pull in a, uh, a model if I can find one. So alarm clock and four, open up, import it. It's probably going to import wrong. I don't know. Let's see. Ah, way too, way too big. Oh, anyways, here it is. That is my subject. Anyway, I want to use a plane, so I go into Add Geometry, and then I'm going to add a simple plane. It's very small, which is uh, fine, I guess. But main, maybe that means that my scale here is way too big, so I'll do it in zero point. Let's just keep this to one and scale up the plane to uh, 20. Let's see if that's enough now, 40. And then I'm going to use the move tools and then add the scale because what I do there, I can actually make it a little bit more as I want to. So about this and maybe add this area here. Then I'm going to uh, duplicate the plane here. And then I'm going to rotate it to uh, nine degrees. Move it over here. Just doesn't have to be precise, just have to be more or less. And then that's about it here. Then I'm gonna add, duplicate another plane. It'll be the first plane I'll duplicate again. Um, duplicate, okay. rotate the other way around, nine degrees. This will be my back plane, so I'm gonna use it here, but actually probably move it a little bit further away. So you notice here that, turn on performance mode, you notice this there. Oh. that there's a, uh, here we go, a, a gap between them. And then I'm gonna move it up. So like this, and the gap actually makes for a nice extra shadow. And if I move it further away, it actually looks even nicer. I will come back to why I'm gonna do this. But, uh, let's just do it like this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a fourth plane and this one is gonna be smaller. So I'm just gonna add another plane here and move it all the way out here down here, up here, and then rotate around out here. It's more or less small for me. Okay, yeah. Anyway, those are the four planes that I need. Um, and that's about it actually for, for the setup. Uh, what I'm gonna, gonna do is I'm gonna go into uh, a quick performance mode. Then I'm gonna go in and move everything up. So I'm gonna highlight everything, press the move tool move it up a bit, which also gives me that shadow down here that I want. Um, and then I'm gonna add stuff, I'm gonna start with the materials. And I downloaded a few from the uh, from the cloud, from the from the cloud library. And uh, one of my favorites at the moment is this uh, Speckle Clay, it's called. It's an awesome one. And I'm typically I'm gonna use it for this one down here. And as you can see, it's way too big. So I'm gonna go into the texture map, upgrade to a new node apparently. And then you can see it's massive. So I'm gonna at least remove 
the better. Gonna zoom in here. Uh, it's still way too big, so. 20. Nice. It's a bit difficult to see, so I'm gonna change my environment at the same time. You know, I go into the environment tab over here, and I'm gonna click in quickly, as quick as I can. I'm gonna choose uh, another one here. Wonder if it's so slow because I'm recording as well. Anyway, go into my downloads. Again, I downloaded a few from the uh, from the cloud library, and one of my favorites at the moment is the that's for Chrome materials. Could put in here. It just adds a little bit of extra to my, uh, and then I'm using control and holding down the left mouse button. I can rotate the environment a little bit. Okay, that's just better. I can better see now. Okay, camera. Not necessary right now. I need to the materials, so it's actually one because it's still texture is too. Maybe twenty is okay. Let's go into the material graph and see here. Bump twenty. Maybe hundred. Fifty. You see, I'm just eyeballing it a little bit to find somewhere where I, I, I can still see the detail, but not too much, but a little bit enough to to give me that look that I want. Okay. Anyway, I can see that I want to move my clock a little bit further away from the from the abyss, and maybe over here. Let's look at. This one, the background, it could be a, if we go into the architectural group, I can go to the drywall. It's quite nice and use that for the backdrop. I'm gonna use a second drywall over here, but not the same. So I don't wanna link the materials. I wanna use this for myself and I'll come back to why, because this is where I'm gonna use the opacity map. Anyway, let's look at the composition, the camera. I wanna add a new camera. I'm gonna use, typically when I, I work, I use uh, 65 millimeters in my focal length. And then I'm gonna try and get into something where it's about 90, minus 90 degrees up here in the azimuth. And then the distance, probably way too, a little bit closer. Now I can see that this back thing here needs to be bigger. So I'm gonna move Gonna save the camera. Gonna click on this on the back here. Gonna move that, and also make it wider. So just about this size. There we go. Yep. Uh, also, I think I want to rotate the clock that I have right now because it looked a little bit more interesting when I had it from this angle. I think. All right. Uh, save the camera again. Oh, we do go back to that one. Yeah. Okay, it's right there. It's good. I can then add my depth of field if I want to this because depth of field is great. I always like that. And then uh, this is way too much. So maybe I'm going to use a four. Yeah, I should do it. Save the camera again. Go back to free camera because I need to rotate and do stuff. Come out again. So now I have a way, way longer. Okay. Anyway, go over to my light. Look after the point light, which is right here. Uh, I use the neutral, neutral one. I'm going to move it over here. Right now, nothing's happening because there's a lot of things going on anyway. So, but I need to at least have that. You can kind of see the shadow over here. The reason why I'm using point light is that I found that it's actually quite quickly to quite quickly quick to update uh, the environment, and it has a nice effect and doesn't do all that sort of weird stuff when when you go into environment. When I go into my lighting scene and use interior mode, then it won't mess it up that much. But I'll come back to that. This material, this wall, where I'm going to use my uh, opacity map, I'm going to click on the material graph. This is very, very simple. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a texture by right clicking here, click Add Texture Map, double click on that one, and that will give me this, which is a box, doesn't really need. I just want it to be planar. And then I want to add it, of course, and click on this little icon with the folder. I go into, let's see here. I go into uh, assets. So personal, here we go. And then assets up here. And then I got Windows. Got it. This is the one, the pack that I've made available for you guys. Uh, let's just try the one that we already used, which is quite nice. I think this one. Go in here. Now it's here. 
to actually notice where to know where it is, I'll, I'll typically hit the C button uh, while I have this marked, and that allows me to see that it's way too big and also rotated. So use the P for size, scale it down until I get what I want. It's about here. Let me just try and see if I can rotate it. Hold down Shift to get it in increments of 15, and still too big. So I'm gonna hook, gonna move this, and I'm gonna move these ones down so I have it more or less where I wanted to. And then I can see now that it will not do what I want. I want the light to hit, hit the back wall, but uh, I can actually I can scale it down even further. Oh, and now you see I have set it to repeat horizontal and repeat vertical and two sided. Nothing, none of the oh, why is that meter anyway? Probably because it's the back side. So let's just keep it like that and then move it a little bit again to use the translate. I always try and work with if I can out here. Maybe also I'm gonna. Oh, did I just do nothing there? No, I didn't. just forgot to put it into the opacity of the diffuse here. And then what happens is this one. So now I, everything else is transparent, which is exactly the opposite I wanted. So I go in here in my material graph. Let's just see if I can see everything here. Go into my material graph. I right click on the blue uh, line. I go to utilities. I go to color invert. And now I got what I want. I got a a window that's transparent where I wanted to, the blinds. And that's about it for that. And as you can already, already tell, if I, if I zoom in here, it already has what I need, kind of what I need. Um, I just need to scale this one up a little bit. So I'm gonna go into machine, gonna click on this one. I'm gonna scale it up in this direction and also in this direction. And now, I got exactly what I want, which is only this light coming through from that area. Cool. Uh, let's just go back to my camera view here. And you can see already that the light is here, which is not exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to go back into my free camera here. And then I'm going to pick my environment, turn down this, the, the brightness of it, at least, at least for the moment. So it's easy to see the, where the light is. Going back to my plane here and then moving it around to see. See now it starts to hit the back wall over there, which is great. Um, let's just zoom in over here. It's coming down now. It's actually not hitting my watch, so move it up. Move it away a little bit. And then actually I'm gonna go into, as I say, that's fine. I'm gonna go into this one. I'm gonna go into my double click on the plane, a point line, and then I'm gonna add at least another zero. And then I'm gonna add the point four. So it'll become a little bit more blurry. Actually, that's not enough. Maybe just go into one. This helps already. Maybe 1.5, okay. And I'm gonna move it up, I can see now. Oh. Like that. And, oh, uh, there, why doesn't this? Here we go. Something like this, well, how does that look? It's not the same at all. I'm gonna move this back wall a little bit further again. This is probably too, maybe it's too far away. So click on the back wall, go to move, move it a little bit further in. Take the camera again. At least that's better. Go to my environment. This one was too small. Let's go up to one again. And maybe actually go up to two. And now we're looking up. So add a lot more to the brightness actually helps up with this one. Then I need to, of course, go in and change my materials for this one. Now, what I have here is actually my download. I have this that I love to use. It's called Speckled. 
a little bit of a sucker for speckle apparently speckled matte plastic it's awesome i also found that on the cloud so i'm going to use that here as the base color and let's just double click on that one and i'll just show you the material graph it's awesome it's got all these things that you can change so the speckles are very small at the moment so let me just add a little bit to that do the scale one do this scale of one again the black ones and also the bump it's going to be one to two and that's about it that should be much better now then i want to add some fun lights to some fun colors so i have this orange classic material which i love as well i'm going to use that for Let's see if i can find the right one no that was the wrong one but i'm going to use it for the other one as well but this time yeah okay so I'm going to unlink this material and then I'm going to make it white because I like it. Double click on that one. Choose a white, maybe a, maybe a gray. And then, yeah, it's about it. Then I'm just going to have to go into my lighting, choose, uh, at least choose product, turn up the shadow quality to at least four. Um, that's about it, what I did before, but then I also choose interior mode rendering because it's kind of helps with the right scenes and right settings. And yeah, it's, uh, it's about time to, uh, to hit render. And basically what I do is I typically work with uh, PNGs and presets, depending on what I want to do, maybe 1920 by 180 is typically what I do. And then options, I, this is 500, not necessary. Maybe you can already see it's resting up now. So you got uh, 15 samples, it's not looking bad. So maybe it's only 120 or, uh, samples. And then, you know, go into uh, render and then it'll start rendering out. And that's about it. So yeah, thanks for listening guys. And thanks for tuning in. I hope it was uh, fun and interesting. And at least uh, let me know if you have any comments below or please comment on this, I, I hope that you uh, will give me some feedback so I could improve perhaps. That'd be great. Uh, all right. Take care, guys. Bye.